Hi, uh, my name is David Lane. I'm the voting uh, tourism member of the Save Our Lagoon Citizen Oversight Committee. I wanted to speak with you today about uh, the privilege that I have about serving on the committee and my background and, and love of the lagoon. Uh, I'm one of the fortunate few here in Brevard County that grew up on the lagoon, uh, having been on Merritt Island since 1973, uh, surrounded by you know, lagoon waters on all sides. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I have very early memories of, of uh, recreating on the lagoon, uh, going back uh, really as early as about uh, age six or eight. And ever since then, um, a lot of my life has been dedicated around the, the science uh, of the lagoon, lagoon ecology. Over the last 20 years, I have seen deterioration of the lagoon, uh, really starting from a, a loss of our mollusk populations. Um, I remember as an early teenager, uh, clamming got shut down, and that might have really been the first a harbinger of things to come for the lagoon uh, back in the uh, mid to late 80s. Um, since that time we had seen degradation of oyster populations and then of course uh, seagrass die-offs. Um, in 2016 we had the, the, the big uh, brown uh, algae bloom and uh, the subsequent fish die-off and that's what made national headlines, that's what really affected our business. I actually was receiving calls from other uh, nations, other continents even, about the health of our lagoon, people were actually calling me, they were calling our shop to uh, find out if it was worth coming to Brevard County uh, because they knew they wanted to go on a manatee tour or they knew they wanted uh, to uh, see some dolphins or, um, or they wanted to do some fishing on the lagoon. Restoring the lagoon to its historical health and beauty I think is imperative uh, from an economic standpoint. The residents of Brevard County and around the state and really around the nation know about the plight of our lagoon, but what's not happening, it's a struggle that we need to work on and it's something I work on every day, is, is discussing what local residents can do, people that actually live in the Indian River Lagoon watershed. Nutrient influx into the lagoon being such a big issue that it is, as a homeowner on the watershed of the lagoon, you have, um, you have options at your disposal and that includes um, zero escaping your lawn, getting rid of the sod or limiting the sod that you have in your yard. Uh, the other issue uh, we're facing is uh, septic tanks. Uh, we have about a half a million septic tanks in Brevard County um, and a lot of those, are, the vast majority of those are traditional septic systems. If you're on a septic system um, and you want to help, um, there are alternatives to improving the performance of your system to limiting those nutrients and if you're in the lagoon watershed there are certainly many alternatives towards uh, landscaping your yard in such a manner to minimize fertilizers uh, which would then uh, limit nutrient inflows into the river uh, whenever we have a rain event. When the um, announcements were made that uh, Brevard County was going to put on the ballot a half cent sales tax towards uh, lagoon restoration efforts, I knew I really wanted to get involved. And I'm extremely privileged to be on the committee uh, working towards uh, solving uh, some of the problems that the lagoon faces today.